that really it's a realm of word that, I, that the Lord laid in my heart. You know, sometimes we have this uh, assurance that this is the right word in the right time. So I'm going to share about uh, uh, this subject. It's time to move on. And I'll read the scripture in the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, and I'm reading on the New Living Translation, it says, When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, You have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. It is time to break camp and move on. And let me share what was happening with God's people. They stayed at the mountain and Moses went up the mountain where he spoke to God like face to face, like a man speaks to another man. And God gave him the Ten Commandments written in tablets. So God uses tablets. It's a great thing that I can use my tablets. <laughs> and he wrote with his finger what we do in our tablets. So I don't know if God wrote in iPads. I don't think so. <laughs> But uh, there were stone iPads. <laughs> but God uh, got these uh, tablets and wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger. But you remember when Moses came down, they, they had an idol built. And so he broke the, the, the tablets and he fasted the, uh, uh, 40 more days. And, and so they were there for a long time. They were there for a long time. It was a place of blessing. It was a good place to be. But then the Lord said... You have stayed in this mountain long enough, and, uh, and it's now time to move on. Now, uh, sometimes we, uh, let me go back to the, to the other slide. Sometimes, wow, sorry, I guess the, this tablet needs uh, God's finger here. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> sometimes, we, even if we're blessed and we're in a comfortable place, God will steer our life and will tell us it's time now to move on. Sometimes we even think I'm in the right place. I, I enjoy being here. I enjoy being what I'm doing. Or I enjoy this house. Or I enjoy this, this, my job. And you know what? God many times is so patient that He will wait on us. But when it's really time to move on, how many of you know that God will disrupt things in your life to cause you to move on. Sometimes He does. So we need to learn how to listen to the Lord. And it's very exciting to receive a new thing. Because when God says it's time to move on, it's because He has something better ahead. You know, it's time to receive a new law. It's time to move on. There's a new order of things. There's a new beginning. And when it says you've stayed here long enough, it means that they stayed the exact amount of time. It wasn't too long or too short. It was time. And God told them it's time to move on. And many times we're uh, hindered from moving because we don't like change. We like to settle for what we have. And, uh, and we, 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 it's a good thing to learn how to be content and how to say, okay, you know. But God has fantastic things ahead, better things for us. Long enough, I, I, I want to stay in the mountain long enough. Uh, it, it, you know, sometimes we have these uh, prayer meetings, and I like long prayer meetings. Some people like short prayer meetings. I like long prayer meetings. Some of you uh, say, no, no, give me 10 minutes, it's enough. Uh, you know, I, I love to be in a, prayer, a long prayer meeting, and we're all different. But sometimes, you know, I'm praying, and I pray for five minutes, and, and the Lord says, that's enough. And that's fine with me. Those of you that like short prayer meetings, they say, yes, that's enough. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, uh, we have a tendency to sell. And sometimes we stay too long in certain situations. Sometimes we also fail in what we do. And so many people, they fail, they fall, and they stay there. And they, they just think about... Their, their failures. They just think about you know, how miserable they are. Uh, they think about how uh, they committed that huge mistake of accepting that uh, uh, job uh, proposal. Or that mistake of getting married. Sometimes it's a mistake also. 
So we need to learn how to listen to the Lord. And the best response to failure when we fall is to get up again. It's to move on. And, uh, and uh, uh, in Micah chapter 7 verse 8, it says, For though I fall, I will rise again. Amen. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord himself will be my light. Don't, don't you love this verse? Amen. You know, you should memorize this one. You know, for though I fall, I will rise again. I will rise again. I, I was listening to, to this expression over and over this week. As uh, unfortunately, uh, after that uh, bomb attack in, uh, in Boston, uh, we saw those runners falling and, uh, and, then, and then standing up. And uh, uh, the President of the United States was saying, we will rise up and we will run again. And we don't care if we're being under attack. We will rise up. And you know, as Christians, we're also under attack. We're also under attack. We have an enemy that plants, you know, our personal bombs and other things in our life. And, and certain times we feel like we're trapped. There's no way out. We're trapped. We, there's no way, no way to get a new job. Or we think there's no way to get a better house or to pay our debt. Guess what? God is in control. And He will be your, your light. Jesus is the light that shines to the people that are seated in darkness. You know, the, the New Testament says the people who were, who were seated in darkness, they saw a great light. This is in the Gospel uh, of John. And, and this is the light of Jesus. And we need to uh, 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 have a, a greater intimacy with the Lord in order to have Him as our light. He will only be our light if He's close to us. Now, let's move a little bit uh, further. And I have a few verses that you should uh, take note. Now, on uh, Isaiah 61, verse uh, 7, it says, Instead of your shame, you shall have twofold uh, recompense. Instead of dishonor and reproach, shall, you shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess double what they had forfeited. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. So, sometimes the enemy comes and he steals. He comes to rob, to kill, and to destroy. Amen. But the Bible says that when we walk with God, instead of, of shame, we're going to have double portion. So we, God wants to give us double of what the enemy has stolen. I think that's a good deal. Amen. Don't you think it's a good deal? Yep. Yeah. Imagine you had a million dollars stolen and the insurance company paid you two million. Everybody will ask, where's that insurance company? I want it. I want it. I want that insurance company. So here you have your insurance. You're insured. You, you know, we, it's better than Industrial Alliance. This is the best insurance company. Better, better than RBC. When you're insured by God. When the enemy comes and takes away what you hold as precious. You have this promise of God that He will restore. But in order to receive restoration, we need to be sensitive to the voice of God and know when to move. Mm -hmm. So how can I best handle another move? Because uh, we move on so many times. Some of you moved on from a divorce. Some others moved on from a, a loss of a loved one. Some moved on uh, from a different country and you're right here. So there's different ways we move on. So let's just see briefly how to best handle this. Now, Psalm 139, it says, You chart the path ahead of me and tell me where to stop and rest. Every moment you know where I am. You know what I'm doing, what, uh, what I'm going to say, even before I say it. Lord, this is our God. So, uh, before we speak, He already knows what we're going to say. This is mind-boggling, you know? Uh, sometimes I, I, I watch this TV series where people travel from the future back to the past and they know what other people are going to say. <laughs> I don't know if you ever watched the, this the TV series. And it's kind of funny, you know, to watch. But in real life, this happens with our God. And this happened with Jesus. Now, a, a great thing about this uh, scripture, you know, this is anointed scripture. It says he charts the path ahead of us and tells us where to stop and rest. It's kind of like, let's say you, you do a trip to Florida 
and you go to CAA and you ask them an itinerary and you tell them I want to stop two times and so please give me the itinerary and they give you a huge notebook with different pages where it's charted everywhere you can go it shows what to do in each city and where to sleep so you know where to stop and where to rest so you receive that chart and you have two options you follow the chart or you decide to improvise if you decide to improvise you can end up in a bad motel you can end up in an ugly place you can even get lost in the journey so this is just an example let me tell you in our life God has charted the way for the place where you're supposed to be so if you think you that you've been waiting for too long uh, just be sensitive and ask the Lord God is this time for me to move on you know sometimes and I hope it's not your case here but sometimes there's also a time to move on from a church that happens too and sometimes a place where we enjoy being it's comfortable you know, I, I enjoy being in, uh, in small churches, but I like being in a big church. I really enjoy big churches that have everything. And it happened to me more than once that I'm in a big church and the Lord says it's time for you to move on. It happens. And it happens to pastors, it happens to Christians. So we need to be sensitive. I said, I, I hope it's not your case today. <laughs> I hope you, it's not time to move on from what we're starting here. But the reason why we're starting Passion Canada, it's because a, a, there's a group of people, and it's you, and we have something in common. We felt it's time for us to move on and conquer the land. Now, when we move on with the Lord, He will even surprise us. Because, you know, this same psalm, it says on verse, the following verses, You both proceed and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my hand. Such knowledge, it's too wonderful. It's mind-boggling it's too great for me to know so he's ahead of us and he follows us and he places his hand upon our head so where is he he's everywhere he's in front he's on uh, top and, and behind he's everywhere and this is too wonderful for us to know and listen when we walk with God and we when we obey to the Lord and when we move with him He's always with us. You know how some people say, oh, God is always with me, and their life is miserable? Mm. Have you ever seen people like this? They say, oh, God is always with us. He's uh, Emmanuel. He's God with us. And they know it as a sentence, as, a, 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 as something that, that is understand, they understand psychologically, but they don't understand these things in the spirit. It's really important to give all the steps in our life. Uh, in, in order to, to step into a new season, to move on with the Lord, first we need wisdom from God. So without God's wisdom, we're not going anywhere. We need, we need His wisdom. Then courage to follow Him. Because even with His wisdom, sometimes it's, uh, it, it's, it demands a step of faith. We need courage. We need to be bold. Then we, we need to learn how to listen to God. This is the most important thing in our Christian life, let me tell you. To be able to listen to God. And to know when, when it's God speaking. Because, you know, there are so many people that say that God speaks to, us, to them. You know, those people that, that put bombs around their, you know, uh, their bodies and they uh, kill a lot of people, a lot of innocent people. Many of them, they say it was God who told them to do so. And they even praise the, the Lord before they blast themselves. And we see these all over the world. So there's too many people saying they listen to the Lord when in fact they that the Lord is themselves or they're listening to the wrong God. Okay? So it's very important for us to know that we follow the true living God. How do we know this? It's by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And after we uh, walk with God, we start to know His voice. Jesus said, they will know my voice. And then, when it's time to move on, we just need to obey. I'm almost finished, but let me uh, go, uh, move on with the message. Second Samuel chapter 2, let me give you an example how David asked 
uh, direction from God. It says, after this, David asked the Lord, should I move back to Judah? And the Lord replied, yes. Then David asked, which town should I go? And the Lord repl replied, Hebron. So here you, you, you see the detail. And don't, don't be afraid when you pray to ask for details. Should I sell this house? Yes. And for how much? <laughs> and where am I going to live after? Should I accept this job? Yes. And uh, for how long? You know, ask details to the Lord. Ask details. Be detailed. You know, some people, uh, uh, they're, they're, let me give you this example. They're single. And they want to get married. And they ask the Lord, Lord, I, I want to find someone. But they don't detail anything. <laughs> they don't detail anything. So, so when we pray, we shall be able to go up to the details. You know, the, the, the church that I see, you know, just conquering Montreal, it's a church of excellence. And I've asked the Lord, you know, how should we build? And, and surely in the past churches that I, I had the privilege to plant, things happened really fast. It was one month, two months, and we had a church, and then we opened in another place, one month, two months, another church. And over here, the Lord told me it's going to be slower. So I have to be patient. But I asked the Lord, how slow? <laughs> <laughs> and we go to the detail. It's like, you know, we, we, we ask you to pray for a building. Yes, we want a building, but what kind of building? You know, if it's any building, it's easy. But, but I said, Lord, it has to be well located. The Lord said, yes, well located. And the money will be there. Now, David asked detail. Should I go back to my, uh, uh, my, uh, my home? And yes, but to what town? Because he had different choices. So we have different choices in life. And don't be afraid so to be specific. Don't move just in zeal. Sometimes we have zeal for the Lord. We want to do things. And, and so we, we, we do all sorts of things. Uh, but let the Lord guide your steps. In, in things that we do for God, sometimes we, we feel that we are too stretched. And some people say, oh, I don't, uh, you know, don't ask me to go to cell groups, or don't ask me to do this, or don't ask me to do that. You know, and sometimes we do. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Just relax. Just do whatever the Lord asks us to do. And uh, the, the, the Lord will give you also pastors to guide you in your steps. That's why we have pastors in the church. It's to help us to find guidance. And, uh, and we, we may uh, obey the pastors or not. That's, that's our choice. Now, um, in Proverbs 19.2, it says, Zeal without knowledge is not good. A person who moves too quickly may go the wrong way. So, so we have our zeal of doing things. But zeal without knowledge. Uh, zeal, it's... Quel est le mot français? Zeal? Zeal. Zeal sans connaissance or sans sagesse. Uh, c'est pas bon. <laughs> c'est ce qu'il dit. So, zeal without knowledge, it's not good. So, uh, we know all these people that are so uh, uh, fanatic for God and they want to do all sorts of things, but they have no knowledge. So, we better stop and ask God, what should I do next? And I think I still have a, a Bible verse. In Isaiah 54, it says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right hand and to the left. And your offspring will possess the nations. Praise God. Wow, praise God. You believe this. You see this. This is the, the prophecy of the Messiah. Of the Messiah. In chapter 53, it talks about the, it's the prophecy about the cross. There's a full description in the book of Isaiah of the crucifixion. What Jesus did for us. And continues. And when it gets here, this is talking about us. It's talking about the church. So we need to look ahead. You, know? you need to go beyond the barriers of the past. And prepare room for the blessing. Sometimes you think, well, I'm not going anywhere. You know, it seems that everything's stalled. What am I doing here? Maybe you're just preparing storage space 
for the blessing of God. And if you don't have faith, your future uh, will be uh, impossible. So you will not be able to receive blessings without faith. So wait for the blessing before you move and then give us a step of faith. Sometimes the Lord will ask you the reverse. First give a step of faith and receive the blessing. But by experience I'm telling you the natural order of things is the Lord blesses you, then you give a step of faith. In certain very important moments of your life, He may tell you very clearly, give the step of faith that I'll bless you. Like we heard the testimony that, you know, the tithe, the, the deed c'était le dernier, et après le, Lord, le, le Seigneur a béni. So the tithe was the last thing you gave to the Lord, and the Lord bless you. So there's time also for these uh, 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 events in our life. But the normal way, God will bless us. And He will bless us in the spiritual and in the natural. The righteous will move onward and forward. Let, let's say this together. The righteous will move onward and forward. Amen? And those with pure hearts will become stronger and stronger. All right, so we're righteous not because of what we do, but because of what Jesus did for us. So just repeat after me. I will move, I will move onward, and onward and forward. As I become stronger, as I become stronger, and, stronger. and stronger. Is that right? <clears throat> you know, I've noticed with the... With age, that I, I, my body doesn't feel stronger, but I started to rebuke that. Amen. Rebuke it. Sometimes we have a pain, we have a weakness, we have a disease, we have something happening. But we need to believe in the Lord. I'll become stronger and stronger. Like Caleb, that was able to conquer, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the promised land. So, it's time for us to move on. And it's time for us to understand that without the wisdom of God in our lives, we will not go anywhere.